Kwaku Fari here for TalkSport MMA. The ceremonial weigh-ins are done for UFC 304. I'm here with Nick Pete from Fight Disciples. First of all, I didn't realise this match was such a celebrity. He had us waiting for about five minutes, <laughs> talked to all the adoring fans. <laughs> it's crazy, man. UFC Fight Weeks are a little bit special. And thankfully, with the Fight Disciples podcast, over the last eight years, we've been able to build like a bit of a, bit of a community, you know. So uh, I think everyone's staying close to me because they know we've got a couple of pairs of tickets to give away later on this <laughs> evening. So everyone's uh, keeping me on their radar just in case. You're going to be busy this evening. Can I just ask a question? I'm asking everybody this. How are you going to see through the night? Obviously, it's going to be a long night tomorrow. The fights kick off very, very late. Yep. What's your routine in terms of staying up for the, what, 5.15 a.m. fight? My usual routine would be to just chill out tomorrow, take it easy, Ricky Atten style, full English in the morning, maybe a little soak in the bath, and then trot off down to the fights around 5 p.m. But obviously, this fight event doesn't start till 11. Mm. It's going to go right through the night till 7 a.m., then we've got to do a review show live as well on TNT. So it's going to be an unusual one. My tactics, to be honest, at this point in time are just to go out tonight, get completely smashed, yeah. stay up as late as possible. I think Liverpool's pre-season <laughs> game's on at early hours. Yeah, right. If I'm watching that with a few beers in my hand, I think I'll be happy and hopefully... Not going to bed till 3, 4 in the morning means I can sleep in till gone lunchtime. I might be watching that with you, mate. Good luck. What about this? Lively, weren't it? It was lively, yeah. We expected it to be, you know, I think it was a good few thousand in here. I'd say about three, three and a half thousand in here. So it was a real good turnout. This is my first time in this brand new arena. And I've heard stories about the acoustics being second to none in the UK. And already with just a few thousand in here, it sounded incredible. So I'm really looking forward to tomorrow when there's 20 odd in here and really hear all the noise. But... Yeah, man. I think everyone's just getting, we're getting that close now. Listen, in the UK, we only get one UFC event a year. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal, man. It's basically like the cup final, the Super Bowl, whatever you want to call it. It's the toughest breeding ground in all of sports. We get one big one a year and the fans turn out in force. Leon headlines the last big one in the UK. Obviously, you got that very impressive win over Usman in their trilogy fight. Yeah. He's a different person this fight week. You saw him take the microphone, microphone from John Anik, yeah. took it completely, riled up the crowd. He's up for it, isn't he? He is, yeah. And I think we've seen Leon mature in front of our eyes, especially since he became champion. You know, I was lucky enough to go to Salt Lake City and watch Leon win the belt. I was one of very few British media that made it out there. But from that very moment, from the moment that head kick landed, one of the greatest moments in the history of the UFC, he's just become a different animal because for years he's been telling us he's best welterweight in the world. He had the win and run to prove it more than the champion. Eventually he got his shot and he proved to the world that yes, he is the best welterweight on the planet. And since then, as you say, winning again against Kamaru in the rubber match, beating Colby Covington, silencing him. You know, that was such a one-sided fight for Leon and now number one contender Bilal Muhammad. He truly believes and he has shown it with his performances that he's peaking as an athlete. Yeah. You know, and there's a real strong conversation now that he's the greatest mixed martial artist this country's ever produced. I completely agree. Obviously, he wants to get that one back as well. No contest in the first fight. The eye poked Bell uh, ended the fight in the second round. Another rematch, the co-headline, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. A yep. dangerous fight for Tom. Obviously, we know what happened in the first fight. Blew his knee out after 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. How much is revenge a motivation for Tom in that fight? Uh, I, I don't know if it's about revenge. I think it's just about kind of, you know, it's a stain on his record. Everyone knows what it was. It's showing up as a loss via TKO, but, you know, Tom blew his knee out by kicking Curtis. It wasn't even like Curtis checked the kick either. It was just a freak accident. He went into the fight with a knee injury. The worst possible thing happened to him. But he's put that behind him. He's gone on. He's become the interim heavyweight champion of the world. I think Curtis is here on merit as well, you know, with the John Jones, you know, tied up with the Stipe and being injured, with Cyril Gander side, and he doesn't want to fight Tom. He'd rather go and be an actor. There's nobody else really left to face, so... Curtis Blades is absolutely here because he deserves to be here. Unlike the Leon fight where we've seen a full round with Bilal to judge it. And for me, Leon just looked levels above. In this fight, it's different because we have only seen 15 seconds. So Curtis has got nothing to think that he can't get it done. We talk about his wrestling, but actually Curtis is a big old boy. He throws nice big hands. He throws straight shots as well. So there's a lot of dangers here for Tom. I just think... At this stage of his career, so close to a John Jones fight, so close to fighting the greatest of all time, I would love to see Tom do some rounds, show us his jiu-jitsu, show us his ground game, but you know what? There's a reason why he's 
all knockouts, all finishes in the UFC. Only one fight got outside the first round because he's so deadly, he's so fast, he's so quick. And especially in the heavyweight division, you don't carry anyone in this game. Yeah. If you see a finish, you take the finish. And he takes it, certainly. Your mate Michael Bisping was bigging them up in the Q&A before, saying that if he goes on and beats Curtis Blades, he beats John Jones, he could go on to be one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time, if not the greatest. Yeah. Further down the card, let's look at Paddy, Pim Paddy Pimlet, a man who was once the crowd favourite. Mixed reviews when he came out. Obviously, the crowd is still behind him. Mm -hmm. How big is this fight for Paddy against Bobby Green? Um, I think fan-wise, I think it was clear to... to to everybody here today, he's got a massive fan base still. I think Paddy will lose something in the fact that there's no over under 18s allowed in the arena on yeah. Saturday night because it goes through the night. You've got to be over 18. Paddy has got this astronomically big under 18 fan base. There was loads of them here today. Dana got a bunch of them on stage and everything. So, but you better believe everyone will be pro Paddy tomorrow, and he'll need it because it's the toughest fight of his career. Mm -hmm. You know, Paddy's been a champion outside the UFC. He was a champion in Cage Warriors. He hasn't put a foot wrong in the UFC. Yes, he's had a close fight or two, but he's come through it and he's got his arm raised. I think this time he's fighting for the rank and position and being ranked in the UFC is incredibly difficult. Being ranked in the UFC's lightweight division is almost ridiculous yeah. because the weight division is so stacked. It's just genetics. Most people, most human males on this planet, when they weigh in as an athlete, are around 170 pounds, 155 pounds. So they're the strongest weight divisions. So there's just more bodies, more of them, higher caliber. If Paddy can get ranked, I just hope universally gets the love that he deserves because beating Bobby Green, getting himself number 15 ranking with the UFC is no mean feat, believe me. Correct, and especially in such a competitive division. Real quickly, Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikese. Arnold on a bit of a slide at the moment. It's a dangerous fight for him. Yeah. How do you think he gets on? I think it's an incredibly tough fight. I think it's my tip for fight of the night. I think it's a lot of people's tips for fight of the night. You've got two guys in the top 10 in the featherweight division. Giga's had a, hit a few rocky roads as well after being tipped as a future title contender. He's bounced back now, put a few wins under the belt. Arnold got to the top of the tree, lost to Max Holloway, no shame in that. Then come really close, losing on a, a close points decision to uh, Movzar Evloev last time out. First time he'd ever lost two on a spin in his career. Mm -hmm. He's got to bounce back. There's a lot of pressure on Arnold to deliver, but Giga, as we've seen there, he's absolutely right up for it. You know, two of the best in the world at featherweight division, fighting to remain in the conversation, in the title picture, because the loser potentially slips outside the top 10 and nobody wants that. Exactly that. Really quickly, I think I know what you're going to say in terms of the answers, but I want your prediction from each fight. Start at the top of it. Leon versus Bilal. How do you think that goes? I think Leon will get uh, his first finish since he picked up the belt from Kamaru. Nice belt prediction there. Um, next fight on the card, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. How does that go? Another first round finish for Tom. Oh, I would love that. Obviously, if that happens, we're going to be going mad. Obviously, it's going to be 5 a.m., but we will be going absolutely bonkers. Paddy versus Bobby Green, how's that go? Uh, I believe in Paddy. I believe he's going to raise his game. I believe he's going to step up to the plate, and I think it'll be tough for him. But you know what? I could even see a late submission victory for Paddy the Baddy. And the Arnold fight, obviously, told me you think it's going to be fight tonight. How does that one finish? It's tough, but you know what? I'm going to stick with Arnold as well. I'm going to get accused of being very British biased here, but I'm going to stick with Arnold as well. I think we're going to have a great night. I really do. You know, Not all the Brits are going to win, of course. There's going to be some losses in there. That's just the, the nature of the beast. But I fancy Arnold to, uh, to just have enough to beat G get over on points. Those are thoughts of Nick Pete. Make sure you're locked into TalkSport MMA. We've got you covered over this weekend. USC 304 coming from Manchester.